Good morning. Welcome to virtual worship at Advent Lutheran in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I'm David Hood, Advent's interim pastor. The call committee candle is burning back here on the altar, reminding us to keep them in our prayers as they interview potential candidates for the next pastor of Advent. Now, today in our church year, we begin a week that is the center point of our entire liturgical calendar. Today we will begin worship by recalling the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. Now the processional gospel from Mark does not specifically mention palm branches. Mark uses the term leafy branches, but he also explains that the people spread their coats on the path for Jesus. So, why don't you go grab your coat and we will begin with shouts of Hosanna in the highest in just a second. I'm gonna step over here and I'm going to get my coat. Yep, okay, here's my coat. And we'll use these branches, okay? There. All right, you have your coat. You might want to have your palm cross, which uh, hopefully you received in the mail this week. Um, and let us begin. After I say the phrase, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, you respond, Hosanna in the highest. And we'll do that three times. Okay, you ready? But lift your branches and your coats. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So you see I've already put my coat down on the path for Jesus, huh? Let's turn to the processional gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, glory to you, O Lord. When they were approaching Jesus at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They, they told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. They brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us now bless our branches and our coats. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, Jesus entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along the way. 
bless our bridges and coats. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now for a few announcements. Between today and next Sunday, which is, of course, Easter, you have several worship opportunities. A virtual Maundy Thursday service will premiere at 12 noon on Facebook and YouTube and be available the rest of the day. And then on the next day, it will be the same for Good Friday with worship premiering at 12 noon and available the rest of the day. Then beginning on Easter, all right, we're going to make some changes. Remember, we're going through transition here. Beginning on Easter, our Sunday morning worship time will move to a new starting time. Worship will begin at 9.45 a.m., okay? Get that in your brain. New starting time. Worship will begin at 9.45 a.m. A.M. Over the next several weeks, you will need to keep in touch through the e-news because we will be in this time of transition as we work uh, to come back to in-person, indoor worship. Now, we will celebrate Easter with a lawn chair worship service. Uh, the chairs will be on the pavement here toward closest to the building. You'll be in family groups. You'll be socially distant. Um, everyone is required, required to wear a mask. Now, we've ordered individual pre-sealed communion cups with a sealed wafer on top. 
I want to assure you that the only one who will touch your communion packet will be you. Of course, our Easter service will be available online, as has been the case this past year. In fact, we will continue to offer online worship even after we have fully transitioned to in-person worship. Again, moving to another announcement, I, I, I remind you to check out the new online bulletin so you can follow along today. The address, theadventchurch.updates.church. And please go ahead and learn how to use this resource because we're going to keep using this bulletin format, even when we're all able to gather back here in the sanctuary. Have you had a chance to donate to our audiovisual fundraising effort? We turn now for an update by a member of our audiovisual team. Hi, I'm Molly, and I'm here to give you a quick update on the AV team. So far, we've raised $6,567, and that means we're almost halfway to our goal of $15,000. Since we started this fundraiser, we've been able to start phase one of our plan, which means in the next few weeks, we'll be able to cable for all our new upgrades in the sanctuary. We hope you will continue to give and support the AV team's fundraiser, and Pumpkin wants to say thank you for all your giving, and we're glad we're almost halfway there because he's really excited for the new upgrades for all the video and the audio stuff. See ya. Thanks a lot for that update. And I want to share one more way to give. Volunteers are needed to wash windows. You can wash the church windows inside or outside. Glass cleaner will be supplied. You're asked to bring your own equipment uh, coffee and donuts will also be provided. The date is April 10th, that's the Saturday after Easter at 9 a.m. The rain date will be the following Saturday. Well, this church has been such an important spiritual anchor for all of us this year. Please continue to strengthen and bolster our common ministry because your offerings provide strength and hope both now and in our future. We lift our voices, we lift our hands, we lift our lives up to you. We are an offering. Lord, use our voices. Lord, use our hands. Lord, use our lives, they are yours. We are an offering. All that we have, all that we are, all that we hope to be, we give to you. We give to you. We lift our voices, we lift our hands, we lift our lives up to you. We are an offering. We are an offering. We have several people on our prayer list today. Darlene Cummel will have back surgery on Easter Monday, April the 8th. We pray for her healing and relief from pain. Cheryl Herbert is receiving a few weeks of physical therapy. Uh, we join her in praying that this will finally bring the healing that uh, is needed. We continue to pray for Steve Miller, who's home recovering from heart surgery, and we pray for Teresa Mulgren, who just this week went into the hospital. Uh, they're going to be running tests. We pray for Denise and John Collins, who tested positive for COVID, but thankfully their symptoms are mild. We pray for Janet Bolin and Bill and Deb Bolin upon the very unexpected death of Janet's son-in-law and, and then their brother-in-law and, of course, Molly's uncle. Uh, the funeral was this past Thursday in Minnesota. 
Please pray for Linda Toole, who's being treated for spurs in her neck. Ouch, that hurts. Janelle Gerke asks for prayers for two colleagues at Thurman Francis Arts Academy. Fourth grade teacher Brian Wilcox will have brain surgery to remove a benign tumor. Also, Janelle's seventh grade teammate, Dulcie, is receiving chemo for colon cancer. Heather Roberts reports that Scott's cousin, Jeff, whose COVID had put him on a ventilator a couple of weeks ago, has improved to the point that he's been released and is at home recovering. Thanks be to God. But as I said last week, remember everyone, the pandemic is not over. We're saddened to hear that Patty Ferry's close friend, Lynn, died following a heart procedure we pray for her family. Leading us in prayer today will be Jacqueline Hofuth. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility. Redeem your people from pride and the certainty that we will always know your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change. Grant relief from natural disasters and nurture new growth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Jesus was handed over to the powers of this world. In all nations, instruct the powerful that they would not exploit their power but maintain justice. Sustain soldiers and guide those who command them, that they serve those in greatest need. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. Accompany all who suffer. Grant respite and renewal. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You called followers to tend Jesus's body in death, sustain hospice workers and funeral directors, bless this congregation's ministries at times of death, those who plan and lead funerals, those who prepare meals, all who suffer support and grief. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You inspired the centurion to confess Jesus as your son. We praise you for the faith you have given to people of all places and times. Give us also such faith to trust the promises of baptism and with them to look for the resurrection of the dead. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us now wish for one another the peace of God. And at some point today, text the peace to some of your family and friends. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. And also with you. And also with you. Reading from the Old Testament today will be Patty Ferry. And two people will read our gospel for today, Chad Gerke and Carolyn Taylor. A reading from Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 to 9. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens me, wakens my ear, to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to
As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to the crucify him. The reading continues at verse 21. The soldiers compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. They crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Uh huh, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves, saying, you know, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Lamai Sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion, who stood facing him, saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
It's time for the children's sermon mystery box. And remember, if you have the 845 mystery box, be in touch with me, okay? I need you to do something for me. All right, I'm going to move some of these crosses down. These uh, made out of palm branches. And see what we have here in the mystery box. Let's see. Oh, this banner is older than the hills. Uh, you can probably tell by looking at it. Uh, this is a banner that we have been hanging up in our house whenever anybody had a birthday. Now, we also have a fancy new one. And this one's supposed to say happy birthday when it all comes out. Yeah. Does it? Molly, does it say happy birthday? Yes. All right. We got that one. Um, and sometimes we put up decorations, crepe paper. Yep. And of course, you know there's going to be a cake. And on the top of the cake, you're going to put candles, right? And then you're going to sing happy birthday. You know, we love to do special things for special people. When it's someone's birthday, we like to decorate and light candles and sing happy birthday to you. 2,000 years ago when Jesus was walking and teaching and healing, the people who were in Jerusalem that day wanted to celebrate Jesus because he came in the name of the Lord. So did you notice what they did for him? They honored him by putting leafy branches and even their coats down on the path that Jesus riding on a donkey, was taking into Jerusalem. So today we want to honor Jesus also. And we pray. Dear God, Dear God, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem, the people were very happy. The people were very happy. And we give thanks, and we give thanks, that you sent your Son that you sent your son to teach us and to forgive us. To teach us and to forgive us. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This Sunday in our church here really plays with our emotions. We began by shouting Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But then we read the passion of our Lord as recorded in the Gospel of Mark. And it ends with us hearing a centurion who had been part of that group of soldiers assigned to carry out Jesus' death sentence. We hear this centurion as as he was facing Jesus, Jesus and noticed that after three hours on the cross, Jesus had breathed his last, this centurion stated, truly this man was God's son. Around 40 days ago, you and I began observing a 2021 pandemic version of Lent. Personally, the pandemic made this Lent to be quite unfulfilling because I need to make the Lenten journey, being with other pilgrims and seeing your faces and hearing your voices. I need to make the Lenten journey alongside all of you. Well, this coming week, we will and we can. Please join me this coming Thursday and Friday as we listen to other pilgrims in our faith community reading and praying and singing our way through Holy Week. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.